All right, welcome back to the commentary booth. I'm Kill2 here with Darius Johnson. After much uh, waiting and anticipation and, um, yeah, storms and stuff, we finally have CO2 versus ROL on the field. CO2 on your left have brought three Macarials. They have brought the Freckies back, two out of three anyway. A Guardian, a Blackbird, a, uh, two Sabres, and one Thrasher. And for Red Overlord, we have two Macarials, uh, two Lokis, a Guardian, a Cormorant, and three Daredevils. We spent a lot of time talking about it last time, but it's worth talking about again. Freckies that you see uh, fielded here for CO2 are unique rewards from Alliance Tournament 7 that they got for taking second place. They are worth 10 to 15 billion ISK as kind of a broad estimate apiece, uh, making them among the most uh, expensive ships fielded in the entire tournament. So really, really awesome that they brought those to the field. We do have the match underway. Um, so we'll have to see where this goes. Wherever it goes, it's going to be exciting. Yeah, I think so. We have uh, a lot of Macarials on the field as well. Three for CO2, two for ROL. Um, both uh, sets are going to be armor tanked because they've got the Guardians there. I see just uh, a lot of offensive E-War coming from the CO2 team, having uh, all those mids free because of the armor tanking. They're free to run a lot of what looks like uh, dampeners, probably, uh, although the Macarials headed close into the fight there. So... Um, one of the Freckies dropping fast, getting repped back, but hanging in structure. I don't like his chances. Oh, my God. Frecky down. Wow. Frecky so down. That's 15, Bill. Uh, yep. A Daredevil traded on the other side. They're going straight for the other Frecky next. I love it. Going straight for the money. Not worried about uh, taking out uh, a more important ship like maybe the Guardian or... Uh, the Macarials. That second Frecky getting repped, but uh, taking a lot of damage as well. And we uh, we do have, the, on the Red Overlord side, we have a, a Macarial hitting armor. Uh, Cormorant, they are trading damage. Uh, we were just so focused on that very expensive Freki um, that I don't think we've uh, paid enough attention to what's actually going on to Red Overlord. Um, we do see that Macarial being re uh, repped back up. Uh, and the Freki, the second Freki, has indeed been saved thus far. Um, something's there in a cloud of drones. This is a the really bad um, fight to have these Frekkies in because the Lokis that ROL has brought should be uh, the kind of Hugin Rapier type configuration that have a long range web. So they can easily slow those Frekkies down from really far away, making it really difficult for them to escape any DPS. Despite the Frekkie loss, CO2 actually looking pretty good right now. They killed all the Frigs on the ROL side and they're starting to work on the Guardian uh, as well as the Macariel. Macariel actually taking some damage even though um, the Guardian's still up. He may be damped and unable to lock. No, and that Guardian will be very important. As actually, uh, I wouldn't underestimate the importance of the Blackbird that's about to fall on the CO2 side. Um, it, it looked for a little bit like they were just going to concentrate on those Freckies, and that would probably in the long term have, um, uh, may have cost them the match. Um, but it looks like they've kind of moved on to other things that were annoying them, like that Blackbird, although now they have their Guardian in half armor. That's going to be a gigantic hit in the uh, uh, first Macario in half armor as well. So it might not be totally obvious based on the ships left on the field, but CO2 have a total stranglehold on ROL, in my opinion, at this point in the match. The All the damage you see on the ROL Guardian, he's about to drop, has been applied exclusively by the CO2 frigs and destroyers. He's damped, he can't lock anything. He finally just now got a lock and is sending some armor over to that Macariel, but he's had to make his way across the field really slowly to get there, and he's dead. Uh, just from damage from those Sabres and uh, the Freki, uh, I'm pretty sure. So now no logistics. It shouldn't be too difficult for uh, CO2 to get through the rest of this Macariel. Uh, and after that, there's really just not enough damage left for ROL to get anything going, especially the, with CO2's logistics still on the field. No, and they are once again fo it appears to be focusing on that on that Frecky, perhaps <laughs> a bit over much. I mean, uh, it's exciting and all to kill, I guess, but uh, um, no, actually, this I think is, the goal here is to win. This is exactly uh, exactly my philosophy in PvP. You know, take out as much isk as you can and don't worry about actually winning. Yeah. And that seems to be what they're going for. They figure. Um, we're not going to get back into this match, in, you know, in a way that we could win and move through in the tournament. So we might as well hurt him as bad as we possibly can. I except that people seem to forget that if you didn't kill it with, you know, eight ships or whatever, you're not going to yeah, kill yeah, it with yeah. two. Yeah. I don't think it's going to happen. But uh, it looks like CO2 has switched. Uh, Loki might be next. Probably wanting to free up the ability for their Freki to move around the field just in case something weird happens that uh, exposes the, the Freki to more damage. So 
Um, Loki taking more damage. Now, did you think it was funny that I said exposed Darius? No, I just had a really cool word in my head. I was going to say he's freaking out. Oh, yeah, that was very cool. <laughs> so, Arwell uh, have switched. They're going to take out one of these sabers, it looks like. Although, um, damage slowing down. It doesn't really matter. He does die. So, uh, good job, I guess, killing one more ship. Um, Ewar really can't be underestimated. I don't know if ROL's um, destroyers had um, Ewar themselves, or not destroyers, they had daredevils and stuff, so they probably didn't have a lot of dams. Uh, and there goes another destroyer for CO2, the Thrasher and the Saber are both dead now. So um, I think damps really kind of were the story in this match because ROL was not able to use their logistics ship which is just really, really bad. There is actually uh, offensive e war on both sides. The ROL, Macario running damps or, and or tracking disruptors as well. So kind of the same setup, actually. Both teams fielding something really similar, and it's cool that the, the super blinged out version is going to win. Circle of Two was also fielding the Blackbird. That's um, true, that's true. Yeah. The uh, Loki now for uh, Red Overlord in my battle. Mm, just over 25% armor. Um, this is... Uh, going to take a few more minutes to finish off, but the, as we said earlier, the battle has firmly turned in Circle 2's favor, um, unless they decide it's more fun to make a liar out of me than it is to win in the tournament. I'm surprised how little damage this Loki's taking. It makes me wonder if um, ROL's running tracking disruptors rather than damps. Uh, if that was the case, it may be pretty difficult for these materials to really put out much damage, even though they're very close and nobody's doing a whole lot of moving. The ROL Loki is webbed as you can see. Um, but even the amount of movement you see right there with that Macario drifting across, if he has uh, tracking disruption on him, that's enough to keep him from hitting at all. So if that's the case, that might be why the damage is a little bit slow. Um, but it's it doesn't matter. It's just a, a matter of how much time it takes, I guess. Um, you can see that uh, CO2 is able to web just fine, even with only the battleships. I don't know if the Freki still close enough. Uh, to web, I don't see him in the shot, but uh, they shouldn't have any trouble finishing the match. It might just take a couple minutes. Yeah, the CO2, they, they seem to have focused on the CO2 Guardian, um, but that's not going to make much of it as the Loki goes down, the first Loki for Red Overlord. Um, we'll see what they shoot next, and it's going to be the Macario. It is interesting how much damage the CO2 Loki uh, Guardian sorry, is taking. Uh, it's always really interesting when the match looks to be going kind of a certain way and then later on after it's basically decided there's a target switch and it's like man what would have happened if this target switch would have happened 10 minutes ago when there were still enough ships around for it to make a difference there would be one less Loki on the field oh, we were lucky enough to see it McCurry uh, one a less little barrel roll there sorry yeah you're right uh, yeah. one less Brecky. Um, so this last Macario now in structure um, he'll definitely go down I, you know, there is so much money invested in this tournament. We've we've kind of <laughs> talked about the really big highlights in uh, spending for the flagships and just one more opportunity for people to spend tons of ISK. But even setups like this, ROLs consistently fielded full faction battleship loadouts, and it's not cheap. And it, it definitely says something about what it takes to be competitive in the tournament environment. I don't want to alter the course of the tournament here or anything, but do you know what I would do if I lost a Frecky? What? Get right back on and bring another one. I think they will. I think CO2 is absolutely in this for the entertainment as well as uh, being competitive, and I wouldn't be surprised at all to see them continue to bring them to the rest of the tournament. If you guys haven't caught it, CO2 was cool enough to post kind of a little video they made uh, about that land they set up in the coffee shop that uh, Soundwave mentioned earlier, uh, kind of showing them running their whole program there, and it's very cool. And I think they're they're definitely here to you know provide some entertainment to the community as well as being competitive in the tournament. Yeah, that is, that is really cool. And that uh, that Red Overlord Loki now hitting structure and about to blow up, which will put this firmly in the hands as it has been for a while. What I meant to say was that this is a win for I CO2. think they might win, Darius. Yeah, Red Overlord has been overlorded on. All right, we'll go back to Soundwave. 